Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. We've gotten all your messages. We've gotten all y'all comments <laughs> on the various videos on various channels. Hey. We did tell a few of you all that we will probably pop in. But then after watching the reunion, I really wasn't sure that we were going to pop in. I'm quite disappointed. But um, we're going to go ahead and do this. I'm not sure if we're going to break this up into two parts because we're going to cover everything in one swoop. Just yeah. depends on how long this takes us to get through it, right? Because reunions are not like regular shows. We just want to have exactly. to get some parts and keep it moving. Yeah. So starting off with part one. Um, we see Carlos King goes in the back and he kind of gives every cast member a briefing on how this works. This is these people's first time being on a reunion show. So yeah. I like that Carlos was able to give them that. But when he went to visit the Holt, immediately I noticed that there was a different type of energy that he has with the Holt that he had with the other couples. For me, the Holt and Carlos King, they were a little bit more playful, a little bit more giddy. It was a little bit less business. And, oh, I see you, girl. I see that booty. I see that stomach poking out. With the other couples, like, this is what we're going to do. So, busy with them and, and pleasure it, with them. So, I yeah. was like, okay, so I'm already setting the tone for how this skit going to go, right? Because y'all know me and Martel, we beefing. No, we're not beefing. Today, right? <laughs> um, but I don't see it for him. He'll see it for me. So, you gonna, if you feel a vibe, it be true. So, um, first thing that I noticed when the Holtz came out on set, when they began to speak about different things and different things that had occurred as Egypt Sherrod, who was the actual host of this, began to ask questions. I realized that the hosts, they need a lot of notoriety from each other mm -hmm. and everyone, everyone around else. them. Yep. And let me explain. Early on in the business, it seems like Martel gave Melody the responsibility to be the face, the voice, be the person that's out front mm -hmm. doing things, you know, speaking on behalf of the company, Holt and Holt. And he would be the muscle. He would be in the background making skid happen. Yeah, exactly. But now that that notoriety and that um, has given her a quite an advantage out here in the world, he feels like, well, what about me? When you're out here getting these awards because of Holt and Holt, why don't you acknowledge your husband as well? And this is one time I can agree with Martel. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, if you sign up to be in the background, then you have to understand that there is dirt in the background and no one actually sees the dirt that goes on in the background. Exactly. We just know that the skit gets done. But at the end of the day, the person that's in the front, just like at church, there's a hundred ministers in the back making skit happen. But the only person that's going to get any acknowledgement for the good deeds that go on is the pastor. Exactly. And that's how it's going to be. And the bottom line is this right here. People just don't never know what they're asking for. <laughs> they really don't. So when you at a lower level, it's good that I'm in the background. You ain't got too many people watching, too many people critiquing. But when you mm -hmm. start getting in front of millions of people and people start to recognize you and you're not getting the recognition... You might feel some kind of way. I mean, just like just like on this channel right here, if one of us start getting all the credit for everything, be like, I'm on those videos too. <laughs> they say, don't you so, see me say here every week? So I, I do get it from I get it. I get it from that standpoint. But he but he said from a good point, just acknowledge that I'm a part of this. That's all I want. So I don't know if she'd have done that. But she did it on the show. She was like, thank you, Martel. But it's too late then. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, the, on the flip side of that, Martel can't sit back there and act as if Melody wouldn't be Melody without him. Mm -hmm. Just like she can't sit there and act like you wouldn't be who you are without her. her. That mm -hmm. is demeaning. And like uh, Melody would say, I was well on my way. To be in whatever that God placed me to be. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are a part of it. But don't sit here and act like you're taking the credit for everything that's happened with me. You know yeah. what I mean? So, I say all that to say. Those two need... They need that constant reassurance from everybody. Yeah. That you good. You smell good. You look good. You're doing mm -hmm. good. And that translated over into a lot of their... Marital their issues. Marital issues and their friendship. As I go back and I look at the things that we've seen over this season. I keep wanting to say season one and two, but season one. 
A lot of times you will hear Mel say, well, you didn't call me and you didn't do this and you didn't text me. You didn't call me, but you text me. You can't always tell people how right. to rub you up and down. Sometimes you got to, never mind, don't worry about it. Um, the real show happened with, because <laughs> I was about to go on a rabbit hole. Yeah, you were ready to go. Um, the real show happened with Mel and Tisha. Yeah. Tisha, let me tell you something real good. And you know I like you. I like everybody on the show except for Martel. Um, <laughs> Letitia, you allowed them hopes to bait you mm -hmm. and bait you and put a hook in your mouth. And they turned the reel and they got you as close as they wanted to get yep. you to mm -hmm. the point where they wanted you to say, drop the receipts. Yep. And that's what they would have done. But they would not do it without you saying you wanted it. Because other than that, they would look petty if they did do it. Now, I'm going to say this Marcel. You my dude. I was like one of the first YouTubers that was like, you know what I get, Marcel. <laughs> but right here, right now, Marcel, let me tell you something. What does that do have on you? Because for me, this is how I roll. You can lie on me out the streets. You can lie on me as close as on my doorstep because I'm not standing on the doorstep with you. But when a person sits in your face and constantly validates that you have done something and you yourself don't open your freaking mouth and go back and go head to head with that sucker about you looking at me telling me and my wife that you got some skit on me and I'm sitting right here. Some may add up to me. What does he have on you, Marcia? I don't think he had none. I think he got something. It might be something, but I don't think it's, it's, it's that. It may not be that. It ain't It ain't that. And like, I like that what Marcia said, I'm not going to be sitting on this TV acting all ghetto. You don't have to act ghetto. And our kids are watching. So, yeah, I mean, you can be ghetto nice, too. Uh, and just say the, I do it all day. And say the, say the right stuff where it cuts deep. So, I understood. But yeah, I do too. what you saying, I would have made it very clear. In which, in a few episodes, he did say I did, I did not do it. But on a reunion, I would have made drive it. Home. I would look right in the camera and be like, I have never in my life messed with 20 women on my life. Or and my I wouldn't even argue with them. It, it, it Yeah. Oh, one, yeah. I would not be arguing with them. I would not be win ghetto with them. No. And yeah. I would have told them, whatever you got, go ahead and drop it. Yeah, because this is, seat. Stop talking. Yeah, because this is what it looks like right now. You know on power, when they when 50 said whatever they whatever they said he did, he did that skit. <laughs> it's seeming like whatever Mar Martell is saying you did, you did that skit. Because you aren't going head to head with and I'm not saying battle it out, cuss each other out, drag each other down the street or we'll do whatever y'all do. But you are going to come clean. Either you're gonna produce or shut the buck up while you're in my face. Cause in my face you're not gonna keep saying this about me. And you're not gonna keep on making my wife feel some kind of way. That I feel like we didn't get anywhere with that. Or, unless, back to what we've been saying all season, that some of this stuff is probably not real. So you have to, saying it. So you have to continue to, to play the storyline, regardless if it's true or not. Yeah. But one thing I can say. Tisha was not ready. If there was some truth to it, Tisha was not ready. Because Martel looked at Tisha and said, if you want the receipts... I have them and I can drop them right now. Do you want it? Tish said, if God wanted me to know that, he would drop it in my lap. I don't believe that I have dealt with that in my marriage. And she's adamant that she has never dealt with infidelity in her marriage. I love the fact that Tish is very confident in that statement. Mm -hmm. But you also cannot be so confident in the doings of another person. I can tell you all day long, I don't think Stanley has ever done anything to me. But I cannot 100% say that because mm -hmm. he is a person that 
is leaving my presence. Exactly. I can't I'm say. not around you 24-7. You're not around me 24-7. Yeah. I will hope that God did that way. And it's not something that I have dealt with. But I'm not going to go to bat to bat with somebody and say, this has never happened. Because mm, I no, honestly could no, not no. tell you that. And if you have those receipts... You need to give them to me. But yeah. Tish did not want them. And I will say thank you, Martel, for not putting something in her lap that she was not ready for. Hmm. But let's move on to Mel and Tish. Their stuff goes really, really deep. And I've been peeping stuff for a while. And then some people have been in my ear, too. So a lot of times I try to keep what I feel like I know to be true in the back of my mind when I'm looking at stuff, but also don't let it influence anything that I think or see. Um, but a lot of stuff is making sense now based off of the stuff that I know. And I still ain't gonna tell y'all a lot of stuff that I know. Um, Tish and Mel had a real friendship. Real. Yep. And I feel that Mel was <clears throat> giving Tish the most vulnerable parts of her life and her story. And bits and pieces of that life and that story was making it out to us, the world. This particular vlogger that was able to actually expose a lot of detail about cars, the girl, her name. I mean, details that you wouldn't normally be able to just dig them up like yeah. that. It would have to come from a really reliable source. Mm -hmm. Now, being that it seems as if Mel believes that the only person in Huntsville with this information was Tish. Hmm. And that Tish is the person who exposed all of that skit to the masses so that they can rip the Holtz apart. I don't think I, I really believe that to be 100% true. Because I know how us females roll. We usually have two friends. We usually have one that we say skit to. And then we have another one that we say skit to. Yeah. yeah. There's probably somebody else. And then let's go ahead and keep it 100. There are three people in this, this um, situation. We already know that Martell talks. Mm -hmm. We already can imagine that that girl talks. Oh, yeah. So that does not mean that the information came from Tish. Tish. Now, would I doubt it came from Tish? I don't know. You don't know? Because yeah. Tish has been doing catty stuff. We're going to go ahead and keep it wild. Mm -hmm. I love her. But we don't see her. We don't see her go in and do some skit. Hmm. So Isha went ahead and was like, you know what? Um, when y'all were at that anniversary dinner, why did you even bring up the infidelity at a point? Yeah, like, we you said know, that too. It's like, I why are you bringing it up why right did now? You bring that up? Now, I know yeah. you got to have shock value for the show. Yeah. So we didn't really think of it to be like that. But she was saying that they were in a deep conversation about overcoming things in their marriage. And this was the piece that, of course, Owen decided they were going to, that they were going to air out. Um. So Mel was like, if we're talking about deep conversations and how we were overcoming things what was it that you spoke about y'all overcoming tish said i'm not talking to you i'm answering her questions so once again you had an opportunity to sh uh, to save face mm -hmm. and tish you didn't do it you pretty much made mel look like oh she just be a petty right now no that was a valid question if yeah. you bring that up about me what was the backstory of oh, how overcoming. this was yeah. coming up exactly that was a good question, yeah. And it was a good I question. I was wondering the same thing, man. <laughs> yeah, because we said it would happen. Like, yeah, we're like, what y'all what talking about overcoming? What you, what you, what? Yeah. So, what does everyone know that happened in the beginning of y'all? I mean, because usually, well? I mean, you just think about it when we in sessions where people are keeping it real. Most of the time, people are exposing some stuff that they're dealing with, and a person that has been through that will begin to speak up and say, hey, I've dealt with this and dealt with that. Yeah, yeah. so, so. Yeah. <laughs> so as far as the female goes with the car and all that stuff, Martel said that he has never. never purchased a car for anyone but his wife. I said, but did you lease it? Yeah. Because you can play on words. Because you can definitely play you on know. words here, uh -huh. Mr. So the question is, did you give her a car to drive? To drive. That, sh that <laughs> you paid for. Yeah, uh, exactly. You pulled one out of your pocket. So, so, and here comes Mel. 
When we say identical or matching cars, we're talking about color, make, mom, no, no, no. We, we match a BMW to BMW, foreign car to foreign car. But, but at the end of the day, I still think it's true because the way that Mel reacted when Tish said it when they was at that restaurant knocked the wind out of her, man. She, I mean, you could tell. No, it hit deep. It hit deep because I believe Tish hit Mel with her own tea. That's the tea that Mel shared with Tish. And then Tish comes back and regurgitates that right back to your face. Oh, you want to talk about my husband? I need to pull up on him at 2 o'clock over at the club. But what about your husband and these matching BMWs? And, and that's the one thing with us and our friendship that we have to work on. It. And I think that's why a lot of people don't like to open themselves up to friendship. Because when friendships go sour, yes, that's sir. when you find out what the person really thought about you, man. Mm -hmm. And you just start just saying some stuff to hurt each other. So my question is... And you can't always recover from that. Yeah, and how, were y'all guys really friends or were you guys people or you guys was each other's trust dump? I just mm -hmm. dump my mess on you and you dump your mess on me. We talk about it amongst each other. But the moment that stuff don't go the way that we want it to go, we no longer friends. Now we're going to expose each other. Yeah, I don't like that. So were y'all really undercover enemies? I don't know. You I know, don't know. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not just talking about them. But I, I, real I was in real life, you see it all the time. People that have been best friends for years and all of a sudden they just go evil on each other. Social yeah. media evil at that. I got people that have done me dirty in life. And I know some skit that could body them. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's it's revealing my character. Exactly. If I go ahead and expose some skit like that. Yeah. And at the I'm gonna die with that. But at the point that you even let's just let's look at it this way. At the point that you told me the most vulnerable part about your life, at that point we were friends. Mm -hmm. So if we become enemies, that part is still supposed to be confidential. Yeah. I, I can't I can't use those weapons against you because I made a vow to you that I wouldn't. That's a friendship. Mm -hmm. You can't use them weapons against you. You gotta find some new weapons while we enemies. You gotta go and get some new shit that uh, what you say? <laughs> you just caused me my monetization. Let me stop. You gotta go get some new skin <laughs> on me. If we now we not we, we not friends no more than we enemies. You gotta break some new skin. Hmm. Let me stop right there before I keep cussing. Because you gonna cuss again. <laughs> it's like the old church lady. Once yeah. you get her to cuss, she ain't gonna stop. So, yeah, I, I just don't feel like we got too too far with anything. Um, Egypt asked Martel, listen, the, the the vlogger. I said, would y'all say Funky Dunneed was name? Yeah. Just, just say, say his, his name. name. Yeah. He said y'all name. Say his name. The girl that he brought up to be the mistress. Can you confirm that that's her? Martel claims as if he's never seen a video. He doesn't know what you're talking about. So, therefore, oh, he yeah, can't boo. confirm or deny whether boo. that's her or not. Skit. So, that lets me know. Is it's her. her. It's her. It's her. Yep. And, and we know that I had the same information on. And I was up. And this was before she locked all her skit down. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. I see. Yeah, well, sir, much he running up and down social media chasing everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he done saw it. Now, like my husband <clears throat> said, throughout all of this, the back and forth that Tish was going uh, was doing with the Holtz, Marceau was not participating at all. Mm -hmm. He said he wasn't going to. He wasn't going to do it. He got kids. They got businesses. I get all of that, but Marceau, once the argument came with Tish, Mel, and Martel, another dude needed to step in. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, because that was getting really, really ugly. And I understand your point where you were like, they should all talked about this beforehand. Mm -hmm. Tish, don't go in there and show your hind parts. Don't go in there and go gutter. Don't do none of that. And she still decided this to go was, this gutter. Was plan. Yeah. But at some point, I think you should have stepped up and had her back a little bit more because she did look like she was out there fighting for herself by herself sinking or swimming it was a lose-lose situation because listen if you jumped in people was like he should have stayed out of it 
you didn't jump in. People saying so you, you should, should stop saying, it. Yeah. And even I'm saying it. So there was no win-win for this. But I still believe there was a way to interject yourself in that. Yeah. Some kind of way without getting dirty with it. But I think even if he had inserted something, it was going to take it to a whole... Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, just go back to when him and Martel was arguing at that house. When he didn't even know that there was an issue between them. Mm. And, yeah, it would have, yeah, it would have went so, south. I, I, but I agree, he should have said something. something. But, like you said, something could have, like, really went, like, way. The whole, there wouldn't be no more reunion. Pay you that. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. So... Coming off of part <clears throat> one, this is one thing I will say. I love Egypt as the host for this, right? But I wish that she would have been able to intertwine a lot of stuff that has happened on social media outside of the show into the reunion. Because to be honest, hmm. they reveal more skit on Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook than this show could ever reveal. And there was a lot of stuff that I wish that they had had brought up hmm. that was happening on social media, but it would take a person that's in the social media space like that to be able to come through and pull that information. Cause I'm gonna tell you something real good right now. Melody post her tail off. And every time I see her post something, she jabbing at somebody hmm. about something. And then you got the Holtz, I mean, I've got the Scots. They'll come in and they'll interject and they'll say skit. And then they'll do this. I mean, and this be a back and forth thing all the freaking time. The only thing that I feel like they really pull from Twitter or from social media, that is, that didn't happen within the show was the whole Wanda situation. Mom yeah, Wanda, uh -huh, that was um, <laughs> which was worthy of being pulled into the show. But so I still have a have quite a few questions coming off of, of part one. Hmm. Marso, you can drop down in the DMs and you can answer this if you want to. Yeah, what's up? But uh, all of this skit that Martel has done and said and have said that you are doing 20 women's as Miss Wanda would say. <laughs> why are you still friendly enough with a person that lied on you why are you still comfortable enough with them where this man took you to go to get a vasectomy? Hmm. He went and dropped you off and picked you up. That's very personal. Yeah. Your wife didn't even know that you were having it done that day. I mean, y'all had spoken about it, but she didn't realize that it was happening that day. She didn't even know how you got there and how you got from. And you revealed that Martel took you. I'm very confused right now. One plus one ain't adding up to two. Yeah, somebody that well, goes me. back to less that less that part was in friends in there to make the show a little bit more tasteful, man. Yeah, no, but you let us know, bro. If you can, you can, you can, you can. But uh, and yeah, then, that's like I question. said, another question <clears throat> I had, but I realized why when I told you I realized that Carlos was a little bit more chummy with those hosts than he was with anybody else. Why in the world did y'all allow Martel? to walk away without being able to confirm or deny that that was that girl. Because hmm. anybody else sitting on their couch, y'all wouldn't have allowed them to walk away that easily away from that question. A very <clears throat> spot on yes or no. It's out there. So you saying another host would have never let them get away with that? It's not even the host. It's, 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 it's the machine behind it all. Oh, okay. It's the machine behind it all. Gotcha. You need to reveal this. Yeah. And then Tish. But if it's your show, you kind of. <laughs> That's why I said. Yeah. <laughs> why wouldn't you allow them to drop some goddamn receipts? This is why we're here. Mm -hmm. you, keep, you keep bringing it up. Let's do it. All right, being that this is probably a little over 20 minutes, we're going to go ahead and finish it up with a new video on, and then we'll pick up on part to other reunion so for all you all thank yeah. you for coming through see you on part two straight for the va the dirty dirty south two up two down holla <laughs>